two of the SEC's most storied programs, Georgia and Tennessee. A combined 26 SEC championships, 13 each. As of 2018, Georgia and Tennessee have faced off 48 times. It's the only series the Bulldogs play annually that they don't have a winning record against their opponent. The series started in 1899 with the Vols winning 5 0 in Knoxville. The game was always an entertaining and important one, but one that was rarely played because of conference scheduling rules. Perhaps the most important Georgia Tennessee game in history was the 1980 edition in Knoxville. The Vols built a 15 0 lead going into the third quarter. That's when true freshman Herschel Walker arrived for the Bulldogs and altered college football history. After running over Tennessee's Bill Bates to score the first of many touchdowns in his college career, Walker scored again to put the Dogs up 16 to 15 in Knoxville. But the Dogs had to hold on as the Vols drove all the way to the Georgia four yard line. It looked like Tennessee was gonna score to win the game, but Georgia stripped the ball and fell on it to pre preserve the win on the way to the 1980 National Championship. When the SEC moved to divisions in 1992, the game kicked into overdrive as the two programs started meeting one another each year for the first time in their history. Tennessee took a hold of the series in a big way in 1992 with a 34-31 nail-biting win over the Bulldogs in Athens. The Vols ripped off eight games in a row, winning all of them by more than a touchdown, only the 1995 game coming down to a field goal at the end. But a new century saw Georgia come back hard at the Vols. Number 19 Georgia's 21-10 win over number 21 Tennessee broke the Vols' nine-game winning streak in the series but it was the following year when the series changed dramatically. New Georgia coach Mark Rick took the Bulldogs to Knoxville and shocked the number six Vols 26-24 with a game-winning play called P-44. It was the Dogs' first one in Knoxville since 1980. It is known more affectionately as the hobnail boot. The Bulldogs took momentum from that game and have controlled the series ever since. In 2003, Georgia blew out the Vols 41-14 thanks to Sean Jones' fumble recovery for a touchdown just before the half. A year later, number 17 Tennessee stunned number three Georgia, 19 to 14 in Athens. The 2005 game was an epic showdown between Georgia and Tennessee that ended when Thomas Flowers returned a punt for a touchdown to seal number five Georgia's 27 to 14 win over number eight Tennessee. A year later, Tennessee came from 17 points behind in the first half to win 51 to 33 in Athens. The win put the balls on the cover of Sports Illustrated that week. The two programs traded one-sided victories until the 2011 game in Knoxville. In that game, the Dogs took home a 2012 win over the Vols on the way to the SEC East title. In 2012, number five Georgia survived a shootout with Tennessee as Aaron Murray threw for 286 yards and two touchdowns in the Bulldogs' 51-44 win. The only overtime game in the series came in 2013 as Murray and the number six Bulldogs drove the field with only a minute and 49 seconds to play in the game to tie it with a touchdown. In overtime, the Vols fumbled into their own end zone, resulting in a touchback. Georgia's Marshall Morgan booted a 40-yard field goal to win the ball game. Todd Gurley ran for 208 yards and two touchdowns a year later in Athens as the number 12 Bulldogs won a 35-32 trap meet. In 2015, Tennessee came from behind to beat the number 19 Bulldogs 38-31 in Knoxville. But it was a year later in Athens when the number 11 Vols took home one of the biggest wins in school history. After Jacob Eason's shocking 47-yard touchdown pass, Tennessee's Josh Dobbs connected with Juwan Jennings on a 43-yard Hail Mary to win the game 34-31 as time expired. Number 7 Georgia's 41-0 win over the Vols in Knoxville in 2017 stands as one of the most lopsided wins in series history. The winner of this Saturday's game in Knoxville will have a one game lead in the series. If that's Georgia, it would be for the first time since the 1980s.